happy Valentine's Day. I couldn't help it. I had to create one more layout with the Simple Stories Hard Eyes collection before tomorrow. I had this photo of my daughter. She uh, loves to make holiday treats and on this particular year she made chocolate covered strawberries of course for Valentine's Day. Now I have two photos there but they're the exact same image. One of them is in color and then one of them I turned to black and white. And Then I erased the strawberries so they were in color. Let me tell you how I did that. I placed the black and white photo, actually I placed the color photo first in Photoshop and then I added a new layer with the black and white photo on top. With the black and white layer selected, I went in and took my eraser tool and carefully went around the strawberries and just erased the black and white photo where the strawberries were. I then flattened the image and now I had this really fun image where you have, the majority of it is black and white but your eye goes to that pop of color with the strawberries. Because I'm doing this layout about chocolate covered strawberries I of course have to use that gorgeous red paper for the background and now I'm choosing some other papers the idea I have for this layout is to do a color blocked section across the middle and I'm going to do several patterns here I'm going to mat the photo with that teal emoji paper and then I just love this stripe so I'm going to add a little piece of that stripe along the left edge and then I'm going to look for another paper a third paper to go on the right side side. So we'll have three uh, uneven blocks. They're all different sizes on that right side. Now I love that black and uh, heart paper with all the different colors of hearts. So, but I thought it might be too big in scale since it was so similar to the emoji paper. So I switched over to the six by eight paper to see how I felt about the smaller scale pattern of those hearts. While I was in that book, I found the black and white polka dot. Now the black and white polka dot is not in the 12 by 12 paper. It's only in the six by eight paper, but I really like this because I'm going to plan on doing like some really colorful embellishing across that right side so I thought that this paper would work well for, as a background for that and then the embellishments that I put on top will just really pop so here I'm just trimming up that band so that all three pieces are the same size and now I'm going to mat it on some black cardstock this is just some random black cardstock in my stash it's nothing special um, I think I actually picked it up off of like, you know, a classified ad from somebody, but it works well for matting. And so, uh, because not the majority of it isn't showing. So I don't care that it's, you know, lower quality black cardstock because I don't need the texture and anything like that. Now I pulled out my scallop punch again today because I wanted to add a couple of these scallop borders across the left and right edges of that teal emoji paper to just really highlight my photo. Because it's such a thin strip, I did a bead of glue across each side and then I'm just going to take my scissors and um, trim that to size so that it is uh, going top to bottom. Now I mentioned this the other day, this scallop uh, punch, border punch is by Stampin' Up! and I I don't believe they offer it anymore, uh, but I believe you can check for it on eBay, but there's other companies who make it. It's You can find one by Fiskars. I believe there's one out there by Dress My Crafts. So if you want to start collecting some border punches, this is a really sh good shape to start with and you can look for that. The next thing I'm going to do is pull out the journal spots or the journal bits and look for a few things that I can use to journal on and also to anchor my title on. I really like this hot pink library card and I wanted to put it here on the right side but I wanted to anchor it with another piece of striped paper. I went back over to the 6x8 pad and I found this designer paper that had just a little bit of stripe on it and I thought you know what let's use this up. So I'm trimming it to size. It's a different scale than the uh, stripe on the left side so I like that because it's repeating the stripe but it's a little more interesting because it's not exactly the same. Now you can see that I adhered that piece over the scallop and that's because I had glued down the scallop with a liquid glue so there was no way for me to tuck that piece in there. However, no problem, I'm just going to do a little optical illusion here and I'm going to use one of those off cuts of the black scallop and just glue it right over the top. You're not even the common person once it's in a sheet protector is not even going to know that I doctored that and and um, piece those things together. So here I have the uh, 
pink library card and the TV journal bit, there's really no reason for me to pick that TV. It's just random. It doesn't go with the memory. I just liked it. I just thought it was cute. <laughs> so I'm going to pair it. And at first I was thinking I would put a subtitle in that TV, but I don't end up doing that. So you'll see what I do with that a little bit later. Now I love this hexagon paper. I've been eyeing it each time that I've flipped through the patterns and I've been wanting to cut out these hexagons and use them randomly on a page as accents. So that's what I'm going to do today. I love papers like this. You can get a lot of mileage out of them uh, because you can cut out all of the hexagons and do this on multiple projects. So here I'm just trying out a few different uh, hexagons. I opted some of them I had had like a printed icon on them but I decided to go for the ones that were a little more plain so that I could add additional embellishments on top of them so that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to open up the bits and pieces pack I wanted to bring some black over to the side of the page and I thought I might do that record uh you know die cut but I end up going to this hexagon this black hexagon with the record on it I will cover up that record in a minute with an embellishment but I like that it carries the black over to the left side of the page and then you can see I have a visual triangle with the black 14 hexagon and then the black XOXO hexagon down by the TV on the bottom of the page as I go through the bits and pieces, I'm just pulling out some things. I'm just sorting them, you know, into hearts. I'm sorting them into uh, treats. Because my daughter made chocolate covered strawberries, I thought it would be fun to pull out all of the treat type of things. Um, I love the emoji on that till paper, so I decided to pull out the emoji to repeat that on the right side of the page by adding one up by the number 14, which of course stands for Valentine's Day when she made these chocolate covered strawberries. I also pulled out the large floral pieces. There's only two in this pack, but I'm going to use both of them on this page. I had the little XOXO that I placed on the TV. That almost acts as a subtitle there instead of the subtitle that I had planned and I will add those gummy bears to that in just a minute because I thought it would be cute if the gummy bears looked like they were on a TV show so I will do that. So here I am just sorting. I had all those little tiny crosses or pluses there. I thought I might add those in as well to repeat the black around the page. You'll see them there on the layout. Uh, intermittently as we move forward but I do end up leaving them off it just became too busy now of course I had to have a chocolate covered strawberry because that's what this page is about and I found one in the, on the 12 by 12 sticker so I'm going to dip that into some baby powder to take off the tackiness and then I'm going to pop it up with some foam tape all of these little pieces that I'm putting onto the hexagons will be popped up with foam tape I did a couple of hearts in the top left corner I decided that was too repetitive so I switched that pink heart with the little pink chocolate there or bonbon whatever you want to call that and then I get them all into place with um, the foam tape now you can see some of the plus signs there I mentioned that before but I will end up taking those off right now I have pulled out the foam stickers and I'm going to try on a few to see which one I might use as a title I was thinking I would you know title this page chocolate covered strawberries but I loved this hugs and kisses so much that that's what I end up using for my title however I don't like all of the white on these foam stickers. I just felt like it was spread out and I wanted my title to be closer together, just the way that it was sized on the um, layout across the top. Uh, and so I decided to try something and cut out the white areas of these letters. Now, it doesn't end up looking very clean, so I'm taking a nail file and I'm trying to, you know, sand the edges and make it look better. It's not perfect, you'll see in the close-up photos, but it's okay, it works for this. And I actually like the color of the layout, the red, the polka dot, the blue, um, peeking through those letters now that they're onto the page. Now, now that my basic design is done, I'm ready to add some dimension and some shine. So of course, I'm going to my favorite, which are the decorative brads. I love these so much, they're adhesive stickers, so you don't have to worry about poking prongs into your page. However, I'm not against that either but I'm just um, holding them up to each little area where I think I'm going to add a brad and then just 
um, scattering them around the page. I initially thought I would put some on the buttons of the TV just to highlight those, but I decided instead to peel those back off and put one next to the XOXO. I'll add one to the top of the library journal card, and then I feel pretty good about that. I, they're sprinkled around the page very nicely, but I still want to add some more little cute details. So I pull out the enamel dots, and I'm just going to do a sprinkling of these blue enamel dots in a few places. I had limited sizes left because I had used this color on another project, so I just made it make it made it work. I had this last large dot, and I thought, you know, I need to put that somewhere, and it ends up going down on that pink hexagon at the bottom of the page. Now I pull in this black lace die cut just to bring black over to the very right edge of the page and I like how that looks. Finally I'm going to add my journaling to that pink library card. I go ahead and write it out in pencil first just to make sure it fits and then I write it in with my black pen. All right, this is the Simple Stories Heart Eyes Collection, and I have loved working with it for this season. I hope you've enjoyed seeing my projects. Join me again later this week for more process videos, and have a happy Valentine's Day. 